الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Resuming with the class of the pillars of faith We've addressed first belief in Allah and then belief in angels, belief in the books, belief in the prophets and messengers. Tonight's class is about belief in the hereafter, in the last day. And this is part of the long narration of Jibreel when he came to the Prophet Wasallam and asked him about the pillars of faith, the pillars of Islam and many other questions which we will address inshallah as we go on. Today we're talking about the fifth pillar of uh, faith or article of faith, the last day. Uh, and in another uh, narration, the Prophet ﷺ called it the re day of resurrection after death. Believing in this entails, as Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, it is to believe in everything that was told to us or conveyed to us by the Messenger وسلم, regarding all that takes place after one's death. Whether this is mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet We must know that a human being goes through four stages, four dwellings, if you may. The first one is when he is in the womb of his mother or her mother. Then the second is this worldly life. The third is the life in, in the grave after death. And then the last one is called the last day or life in the hereafter. And it's called the last day because there is nothing after that. And it is the dwelling of the believers in Jannah. Insha'Allah, uh, we will be all amongst them without prior reckoning or punishment. Allahumma ameen. And uh, the dwelling of the disbelievers will be the fire of hell. Iyadhan billah. How does Allah Azza wa Jal prove the issue of resurrection in the Quran? Allah Azza wa Jal uh, proves it through bringing the attention of people to three different matters. The first one is the first creation. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Kama bada'na awwala khalqin nu'idu," just as we produced the first creation we shall reproduce it. Meaning, just as we were able to create you in the first time, we are certainly also able to reproduce you after your death. Producing you from non-existence to existence is harder than resurrecting you after you die. This is the first way. The second way, or the second set of verses Allah Azza wa Jal proves through which resurrection and his ability to resurrect is him given life to earth after it dies, after it becomes infertile. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَى الْأَرْضَ خَاشِعَةً فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ اهْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ إِنَّ الَّذِي أَحْيَاهَا لَمُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى إِنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Of his signs is that you see earth stilled, infertile, has no growing plantations, but when we send down rain upon it, it trembles and grows. Indeed, he who has given it life can easily revive the death, the dead. He is certainly most capable of all things. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third way is his creation of the heavens and earth, which is greater than the creation of a human being. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, 
أولم يروا أن الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض ولم يعي بخلقهن بقادر على أن يحيي الموتى بلى إنه على كل شيء قدير Do they not see that Allah who created the heavens and earth and did not fail in their creation is able to give life to the dead? Yes, indeed, he is over all things competent, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the one who can and has the ability to create such a creation, the heavens and the earth, will not be incapable of resurrecting a dead body after it dies. Now, let's go into the issue of believing in the last day or in resurrection or the day of judgment. These are different names. What is included in such belief? Well, first and foremost, it includes everything and anything that happens, believing in everything and anything that happens or takes place after the person dies, starting with life in the grave, which is a life that is unknown to us. The reality and the essence of this life is unknown to us because it is of the unseen. But it is included because whoever dies will have his resurrection or accountability or his transformation from this life into the hereafter beginning at this is this marks the beginning point of the journey of the hereafter because whoever dies moves from the life of effort and deeds into the life of uh, accountability and recompense, whether it's good or bad. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the best of recompense. Allahumma ameen. Now death happens at a, a certain point that was decided by Allah, decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal, and recorded by the angels way before we, we were even created. So it's appointed and does not change regardless of what we do. And no one can escape it. No one can escape death. No one can overcome the angel of death when he comes to take the soul. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us a good end out of this life. Allahumma ameen. Also included in belief in the uh, hereafter, or resurrection or the day of judgment is belief in the punishment of the grave <laughs> or rather punishment and bliss that takes place or take place in the grave. Ibn Taymiyyah said it is to believe in everything that was told to us by the Prophet وسلم, about the matters that take place in the grave whether it is the questioning of the angels whether it is the punishment of the grave or the reward and bliss in the, in the grave. Now, there are some deviant sects who do not believe in the existence of the punishment in the grave. However, there are evidences substantiating the fact that there will be punishment in the grave or reward and bliss in the reward in the grave Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran and this is the first proof Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about the punishment of Pharaoh and his people he says an-nar yu'raduna 'alayha ghuduwan wa 'ashiyya wa yawma taqum as-sa'a adkhilu ala fir'aun ashad al-'adhab the fire they are exposed to in morning and evening from the time of their death until the day of resurrection. 
And the day, uh, the day the hour happens or takes place, it will be said, make the people of Pharaoh enter to the severest punishment. So Allah Azza wa Jal told us about two different punishments Pharaoh and his people will be facing. The first uh, type of punishment, the type that will take place after death, because Pharaoh was not buried, as we all know. And then Allah Azza wa Jal informs us about a, an extremely severe punishment that will take place on the day of judgment for Pharaoh and his people. And this proves that they are punished after death before they're resurrected and punished severer on the day of judgment and accountability. In the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet ﷺ informs us, and this is reported by Imam al-Bukhari. He said, when the slave is placed in his grave and his companions depart, he will be able to hear their footsteps as they leave. Then two angels will come to him and seat him up. And then he started ﷺ describing what takes place with a disbeliever or a hypocrite on one side in one hand and the believer on the other hand he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam the disbeliever or the hypocrite will be asked what do you say about this man meaning muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was sent to you he will say i don't know i don't know I was saying what I heard people say about him. And then he will be struck with an iron rod and he will make a sound that will be heard by all creation except humans and jinn. In another narration, the Prophet وسلم, as the companion who narrated the story said, he sat at the edge of a grave that was being prepared for someone to be buried in. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, started crying. And he cried and cried and cried until he wet the soil. And then he raised his head and said, my brothers, prepare for this day. If the Prophet ﷺ cried because of death, whilst he ﷺ is the dearest of all creations to Allah Azza wa Jal, he's the one whose faults were all forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jalla. And yet, he feared that moment, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are we ready? That's a very serious question. Then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, started informing the companions about what takes place to the believers and the disbelievers. He said, When the two angels seat him up, the disbeliever that is, and start asking him, who's your Lord? He would say, ha, ha, I don't know. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, that the questions which will be asked in the grave are questions that we all know the answers to now. Who's your Lord? What do you say about the man? Who was sent to you and what's your faith what's your religion we all we all know now that our lord is allah and our religion is islam and the man who was sent to us sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the messenger and prophet of allah azza wa jal but what will make us able to answer these questions once we die is how we act upon what we know now 
See, the matter is not, a, is not just collecting information. It's acting upon this information. To know that Allah Azza wa is creator entails that you enslave yourself to Him. To know that your religion is Islam entails that you live your life according to this religion. You make Islam a way of life for yourself and those under your guardianship. To know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal entails following him, adhering to his commands, believing in what he conveyed to us and acting upon it. It's not mere words. It's not simply saying, oh, I believe. No, it takes action. So those who act upon this in this life will easily answer these questions in the grave. Otherwise, we ask Allah's help. So the disbeliever will be asked, what's your religion? He will say, ha, 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 I don't know. Well, they will say, what do you say about this man who was sent to you? He will say, ha, ha, I don't know. On the other hand, the believer will be asked, and Allah Azza wa Jal will enable him because he acted upon this faith. Allah will enable him to answer, my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, and the, mess, the man who was sent to us is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then a call will be made, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say. Give him rugs from Jannah in his graves, and dress him from the garments of Jannah. We ask Allah azza wa to bless us from, and to make us amongst those people. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will say, open a door towards him from Jannah. And then he will feel the breeze of Jannah and the sweet the sweet smell of Jannah. And then his grave will be broadened. The distance of as far as his eyesight can reach. This is how big his grave will be. While the disbeliever will be having rugs from fire and the gate Allah Azza wa Jal will command that a door from the fire of hell will be opened towards him and he will feel its hotness and scorching fire and his grave will become tight until his ribs intermingle to each other in, in each other. We ask Allah's protection from all of this. All of this that was mentioned are matters that take place in the grave, whether the punishment or the reward, which proves and confirms the issue of punishment and bliss in the grave. The last point I would like to address in proving the punishment and the bliss in the grave is that the Prophet ﷺ used to supplicate Allah Azza wa And this is reported in Al-Bukhari. He used to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from different matters. One of them is, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave and the, from the fire of hell and the, from the uh, trials uh, of this life and the hereafter and uh, the trial of a Dajjal. Now, how can the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal to protect him against something that doesn't exist? 
Yani if the punishment of the grave is something that will not take place, then why would he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask Allah's protection and refuge from something that doesn't exist, will never happen? And be mindful that this narration is reported by Al-Bukhari. So no one can dispute the authenticity of the narration. So these three points prove the existence of the punishment of the grave. Going back to the implications or what is included in belief in the hereafter. We believe that Allah Azza wa Jal will cause the, the uh, sky to split. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَيَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ السَّمَاءُ بِالْغَمَامِ وَنُزِّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ تَنْزِيلًا Watch for the day the heavens will split open with clouds and the angels will be sent down in successive ranks. So Allah informs us in this verse that when this life ends, one of the matters that will take place is the splitting of the heavens. Another matter which is included in this belief is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal will make earth flat. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ And when the earth is flattened and uh, leveled out, there will be no valleys, no trees, no structures, no mountains. Allah Azza wa Jal will make this earth a level plain, nothing of it will be crooked or curved will be smoothened out, flattened out on the, at the end or after the end of this life. Included in this belief is to believe that people will be resurrected after death. Whether they were placed in graves or not. The reason I say that is that someone can die by being burnt and turned into ashes. Someone can die as a result of a wild animal eating him and nothing is left of him or her and so on and so forth. So resurrection here doesn't, is not connected to those who are buried in graves only. No, it is to anything, any being that died. The soul will be resurrected and the bodies will be returned and these souls will be placed in their original bodies. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ لَا يَبْعَثُ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَمُوتُ بَلَا وَعْدًا عَلَيْهِ حَقًّا And they swear by Allah, strongest, the, with the strongest oaths that Allah Azza wa Jal will not resurrect one who dies. But yes indeed, it is a true promise binding upon him subhanahu wa ta'ala. But most of the people do not know. The These souls will be resurrected after they are placed back into their bodies to face the consequence of what they did in this life. And it is placed into the same body and that same body will testify for or against the person. Our bodies will, de will be witnesses for us or against us on the here uh, on the day of judgment in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal says, يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ On the day their tongues, 
their hands and their feet will testify will testify against them as to what they used to do this is really serious this is really scary brothers and sisters this is dangerous your tongue will speak out for or against you you will have no control over it Allah will command it and it will testify for or against your hands your feet what you did with your hands where you walk to with your feet and in another verse the skin will testify against you and people will start talking وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَ شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا They will start talking to their skin. Why did you testify against us? قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The skin will say, we, the one who made us speak is the one who made everything speak. He made the tongue speak for or against. The hand speak for or against. The feet speak for or against. And the skin for or against. So let's make sure we have good witnesses for us in the hereafter. The next point is that we believe that people will be gathered after resurrection from their graves to the place where they will be waiting for accountabilities. Allah Azza wa Jal will fold the skies and will command the sun to draw near to people. In one of the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ informs us that the sun will draw close until it reaches as close as a mile. Now the, wor the word mile in Arabic has two meanings. It's either the distance mile, but not the mile that we know. It's a, difference, it's a different uh, measure, but it is a distance measure. And the other meaning of the word meal, the, the word in Arabic is meal, not mile actually. Meal is the stick that is used into the bottle of mascara of kuhul. And it is this long. Now, the narrator in the chain of narrations who is conveying from the companion said, by Allah, I don't know what is meant by this word, meal. Is it the distance? Or is it that stick? Now, let me say this. Let's assume it is the longest of the two, the distance. You know what it means for the sun to be as close as that to our heads? What is the, concept, what is the result of that? The Prophet ﷺ tells us, people will start sweating. Each according to his or her deeds. How they conducted themselves in this life is going to show on that day. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people will start sweating and some people will sweat as high as their heels and some as high as their knees and some as high as their waists. You see, it's going up. And then he said, and some will drown. And he placed his hand on his, on his face or his mouth. And some people will drown in their sweat. You see the suffering. We can all avoid this now. By properly conducting us, ourselves according to what Allah wants from us according to what was conveyed to us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, we can prepare now. As a matter of fact, there is no other way to prepare except for preparing now. Because once we die, alas, no regret, no turning back, no deeds to be performed, no words to be uttered, and regret will be of no avail. To anyone. And then Allah Azza wa Jal 
in that, on that day, during this terrifying event of the sun drawing closer to people's heads, Allah Azza wa Jal will have certain people go under a certain shade that he creates as Shaykh Al-Utaymeen Rahmatullahi Alayhi wa Sallam Rahmatullahi Alayhi said uh, he said Allah will create a shade which some people will go under and be protected from this suffering. He said some people mistakenly believe that it's a shade of Allah which is wrong. It's a shade Allah Azza wa Jal will speci specially create on that day to shade people under it and protect them from the suffering. People will be gathered, collected, and go through a lot of suffering to the extent that they, and this is a very long narration, I will just summarize it and we'll address it later, inshallah. People will reach a certain level of uh, pain and agony and suffering that they would say, we don't care where we go. We go to, to hell, we go to paradise. Let's just put an end to this. Let's go and seek intercession from one of the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal so that he starts accountability. All of this is prior to the accountability itself. And they will go to all messengers and each one of them, starting from Adam until they reach Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all those before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say, Nafsi, 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 Nafsi. I wish to rescue my own self. Go to someone else until they reach Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say, I am for it. I will ask. I will intercede and then he prostrates beneath the, the, the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah Azza wa Jal will honor his request and allow him to intercede and accountability will start and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Let us stop at uh, this point so we do not make it a long session uh, and we will inshallah continue in the following classes in the belief in the hereafter or the day of judgment.